Hello everyone! So it's again me, Jarvis X, and today I thought, hmm, it's been a while that you made a little video and I thought it's again time to do it. So I will just present some of my findings I did. So I do that nearly every month. I go to the local stores we have here. We are blessed in this town that I live in with some record stores and of course they sell vinyl but they also sell CDs and they sell secondhand stuff like CDs and like vinyl and you have like stores like electronic stores they have sometimes even a good jazz collection there like a little corner like between your CDs and you even find like there sometimes records on vinyl Jazz records on vinyl, that's what I mean. Like, vinyl is totally in common, but... Um, in these days, you know. But, like, the thing is, um, today I just thought, like, I present some of the stuff I found. It's not that much. So I start with... Um, the thing I found in an electronic store that I mentioned. Like, I even go to them and they have a little jazz section and stuff. So... It's Nat King Cole sings the George Shearing Quintet plays. Um, and maybe you can see it. I got it for 349 euro that is. And I felt like for that money I really should take that. I don't have that album. So maybe some of you saw my last like review video with the the musical autobiography of Nat King Cole. Um this box set, like I listen by now most to most of it and I enjoy it. So, and then I, of course it was clear to me that I should get this one. So, it is an official release. Um, September song, Pick Yourself Up. There are like a bunch of tunes from that time, from that time period. I think an album from the 50s. Mm, there's a bunch of bonus tracks on there. Like, oh, it's from 61. Sorry. I, I sometimes just like, you know, I discovered this music too. This is the great thing with this channel for me. Like, I discovered this, you know? Like, I don't know everything. Like, I know some of you who subscribe to this channel and listen to the music on this channel or watch the movies or videos you know quite a bunch and sometimes I don't know that much so I know a little bit but yeah um yeah and it's Ralph Carmichael I would really like to know and I really should google this or maybe you can comment in the comment section um here's the string choir on this album and it's conducted by Ralph Carmichael I would like to know, maybe, is he somehow, like, related to Hoagy Carmichael? The guy who wrote Stardust? Maybe. I don't know. So there's George Shearing, Emil Richards on the vibes, Al Hendrickson, guitar, Al McKibben. He, yeah, Al McKibben, he's a, he was a pretty great bassist. Shelly Mann. Oh, yeah. Shelly Mann. So, I don't know anything of this. I will listen to it and for 349 keep your eyes open there are great gems like that for that price and then there is not far away from this little electronic store there is like um, a record store and they have also a little jazz section so and that's really the store that I really go to because it's really a local business it's not a chain or something and um I looked in the jazz section and I found this. Dizzy Gillespie featuring Charlie Parker, um, the Carnegie Hall concert. So from the outside it doesn't really say when it was recorded and I think once upon a time I knew it because I read like the biography of Charlie Parker, the one that was written by Ross Russell, his former manager. Um, and they mention like quite a bunch like where he played when and stuff but it's quite a bit ago that I read it so 
and I think there are a few recordings from Carnegie Hall, for example, like Jazz at the Philharmonic, but I did not know about this one here, and I think it's with his, if it, it is with Dizzy's big band, and it says, produced by Teddy Reich, Reich, I don't know how to pronounce him, sorry, I'm still a German, um, and he's known in jazz history for producing quite a bunch of sessions for, I think, Savoy Records, bebop sessions, you know, like, great stuff. I think he would, yeah, he's most known for his work with Savoy Records. So, I really want to know what is on there, and it says... It was recorded on September 29, 1947. Um, that's a good time. I mean, Charlie had a lot of power in this in these days, and Dizzy was always great. Like, and I think like even even Charlie was great, but like all the time he was a genius. So you see like quite a bunch of music on my channel here from him so he's one of my big heroes but I think in later years due to the drugs that really kind of ruined him and in some ways you sometimes even can hear that on the live recordings so it's pretty sad but you're just a bunch of legends on this concert so first five tracks it's Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, John Lewis, Al McKibben again Al McKibben on bass, um, Joe Harris so, and then like on tracks 6 to 15, there is like really his big band and there's John Lewis in it, Mill Jackson, Cecil Payne, James Moody. So, I'm really looking forward to um, listening to this. This is quite amazing and we will see, you know, like maybe we can listen to this soon. All together here we I, I will not make promises because copyright is another issue and here comes my main find so I told you there's this little store this little record store and in the front where you pay for everything they have sometimes little box sets and like mostly it's rock music and some re-releases in the front and like that's of course CD stuff you know and I see a jazz thing sitting around there, which is unusual. Usually, you know, they don't have that much of it. And I thought, eh, let's look at it. And it's this thing. Miles Davis kind of blue. And I said jokingly to the owner of that store, how often I should buy kind of blue. But I looked what is added and I read like to you the back of the text. So this is, by the way, a re-release of one of the many re-releases of Kind of Blue. So it says in the back on it, Miles Davis, Kind of Blue. In 2009, Columbia Records and Legacy Recordings paid tribute to a masterpiece that forever redefined the place of jazz and popular music. Kind of Blue, 50th Anniversary Collector's Edition, two compact discs each with more than an hour's worth of music, produced for release by three-time Grammy Award winner Michael Kuskuna, who re-released quite a bunch of stuff and he does great work also with um, his label. The little li That's of course what happens when I make a video. I forget the name of the little label. They just do limited box sets. Maybe it comes later into my mind. But he, but he does great work. And I think with him, if we would lose him, that would be a really, really bad thing for the jazz world. Um, a DVD documentary running nearly one hour, a spectacular 60-page perfect bound book of critical essays and annotations clocking in at more than 10,000 words plus discographic data timeline and copious photography. So this thing here now is the DVD and two discs and the vinyl of course is not here because it would not fit. But this is a re-release without the vinyl of the 50th anniversary. 
So, um, and I thought, e, should I get this? Should I not get it? But then I looked in the back and there is the entire, or what is left of it, um, the entire kind of blue session. Like with all studio sequences, with false starts, with everything. So I'm pretty sure I already like had some of it, but I just had it digital, so I did not have it physical, and I'm a friend of having it physical. And I think I uploaded already a bunch of this. So, and if you know about jazz history, this was one of the sessions where there were not many outtakes. So Miles just went in there with some legends like Bill Evans, you know, Cannonball Adelaide, John Coltrane. Um, and he just went in there and he gave him like a little, gave them little sheets of papers and their parts were on there like, <laughs> and just gave them to them and they were just, it, it was just like a normal session. They were just improvising. They were just like creating magic um, just on the spot. So, and there were a bunch of, like a little bit of like outtakes and little se sequences and like um, you hear Miles a little bit talking and like some talking out of the control room. And But I felt like this is such a big, important thing of jazz history that I really should spend like the... 20, 21 bucks I think I spent for this thing. So I decided, who cares? After that, Sony will not get money from me um, for Kind of Blue. I have no clue on the second, second CD, there is like some stuff like on Green Dolphin Street, Friend Dance, Stella by Starlight, Love for Sale, Friend Dance, Alternate Take, So What? I have no clue. Um, so let's look into that thing. Oops. Yeah, this is a thing in Germany to have to do that, you know, like with which age you can watch this. It's really important to show that. So in front there are like the CDs, like kind of blue and then the second CD, you know. And then great photos. I expected this. So of my arts from the studio, I love studio pics. I'm not sure what you like, but I love like seeing, you know, this like magic. And table of contents, kind of blue at 50 by Francis Davis. Ooh, Francis Davis wrote something too. The Last King of America, How Miles Davis Invented Modernity by Gerald Ely. I don't know that guy. Between the Takes by Ashley Khan. Oh, yeah, Ashley Khan, I know that guy. <laughs> Miles Davis, Six Stack Timeline by Bob Belden and Kay Vallo. Yeah, it's interesting to have. And the credits. So, kind of blue at 50. Great text. Like, of course, I can't read it. Unfortunately, I can't read it all to you because that video would be endless. Um... Here's a bunch of really nice photos. Here's one of him at the club. The play is in New York City, September 1958 with Billie Holiday. So Miles always really respected Billie Holiday. A great bunch and she was like, or she is. There's nothing else you can do with her to just respect her. Like, um, bunch of photos, a lot of photos. So Newport from 58. Great concert, by the way. Um, another one from the Plaza. From Birdland. Birdland, Birdland. I wish I could have like put one time in my life a foot into Birdland. From 59, yeah. So whole bunch of photos and an endless Oh, this is a great one. So, I'd like to know if they just like put color on it or if it was originally a color photo. Um, Miles and Evans at Michael Legrand's Legrand Jazz Session. Hmm, 58. Yeah. So there is endless amounts of photos. Bill Evans' manuscript, Prelude to So What? 
That is jazz history. And this is, yeah, a tour in Germany. F. Great photos. I really like, this is a legendary one. I think like all of us have seen this. I think that's from Studio 30th Street. Which is typical, like typical microphones. I think at, at that studio they used them a lot. Um, Yeah, the last king of America. So here are like the things that I mentioned. Different. Um, yeah, different essays from jazz historians and stuff. This is this is amazing. I, I enjoy this. And occasionally, I really love um, going. Oh, oh, I think is it that what I think. 54th person, New York, August 58. I'm not really sure if it was after that, but Miles has a bunch of um, plasters or something on his head. And you probably all have seen this photo of the policeman who beat Miles Davis in front of the club he was playing at. So, oh yeah, it is. Here is like even blood and everything on his, on his jacket. And... That's horrible. That's really horrible. And I think even in these days, or especially in these days, we should not forget what what happened in the past. Like even to to great artists. So yeah. So endless amounts, endless amounts of great stuff. Um, photos were made by Don Hunstein. I heard the name. I think he, he made a lot of photos for them. It says here he worked from 58 to 81 um, for Columbia. Columbia Records, that is, of course. And I think he made great photos. So, between the takes. This is really the stuff. That is why I really bought it. To, like, I listen to Kind of Blue all the time. We all did. Right, and I really love like to see um, or to get the history with what happened there at the moment, and I think this is doing a great job of like like there's even a transcript of what they are talking in the studio, so that that we can read with it and listen to it, you know. And this is this is great. I really really enjoy this, like. Even the little, um, yeah, notes and pictures of like the tape reels and the second session, yeah, a picture from the 30th Street studio, but I think this is a later one because the microphones, they look kind of like that that are standing here. Also, it's a color photo, so yeah. So let's see, like the second disc, what is this? Hmm. Trumpet. Ooh! Recorded a concert at the Kurhaus, Den Haag, Holland. I'm not sure if that. Nope. 30 Street Studio. So I think the second CD on here is. Yeah. There are of course different sessions and the last so what on here on the second disc that is over 17 minutes long is from Den Haag, Holland. Um, I didn't listen to this so far but would I recommend it? Like if you don't want to spend like for the big vinyl edition you know like that was released in 2009 a bunch of money if you ever look on Amazon or somewhere you will see it's pretty expensive by now so 21 bucks for this one without of course the vinyl I think it's worth it and don't forget there is the DVD on there like with 81 minutes and it's a documentary I think you even find it somewhere on YouTube I'm not sure but yeah I 
would say it was worth it. So, um, that was of course it, you know, sometimes I even buy more, but this was what I found and thanks for watching if you endured so long and feel free like to give me insight, not insight, um, please feel free like to like comment and like tell me, you know, what you think about this thing, like about the set, about my videos, about I really try like to keep this channel alive, which is not always easy. And um, yeah, I hope that you have sometimes some great times here or enjoy it a little bit or that people find to jazz through the channel. It would be lovely. And yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know what I can make better and See you on the next video.